so I'm coming at you today with another Phasmid Files video. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now I must apologize that I'm just sat, not at my normal desk and in my dressing gown. Uh, the reason being, my audio cut out on most of this video. I think there were two or three clips that I took where the audio kept and I'm not quite sure how that happened. You see, I had to adjust my microphone after to get sound back. Um, it was very, very strange because if the microphone fails, the camera also has audio. So for the fact that it didn't pick any up was very frustrating. I lost two whole videos that were pre-recorded um, because of this sound error. And yeah, so, you know, I couldn't really voice over an intro. It would just look weird and I have to kind of get dressed and ready for work now. I didn't really want to sit here in my uniform. So there's your explanation as for why I'm sat here in my dressing gown. We're just going to cut straight to this Phasmid Files video now. Remember, a chunk of it is voiceover, so the audio may change about a minute or two into the video. So here, ladies and gentlemen, feeding on some bramble is an ex tatasoma tiaratum mature female. Now this is the largest mature female I currently own look at the bulk of that and you can actually see while she's eating there the compression on the abdomen fascinating now just in case you didn't know this is how all phasmids feed they make almost a semi-circular pattern in the leaves so if you see that when you're out and about perhaps you have phasmids nearby you now of course mine's just sat over a jug. This is not what I keep them in. It was purely just for filming sake. I took her out of her enclosure on this bit of bramble, ready to film for you guys. Now, their PSG number is nine, or if you happen to get the Innisfail version, the pure bloodline, then it will be known as 9A. But mine are your typical hobby form. Now being an Australian species, these guys love eucalyptus but don't worry because if you keep them in the hobby they are fine exclusively off bramble they'll also eat hazel salal and i believe they'll even take to oak sometimes too i've also known them to take to rose so they're not too bad to feed and they're actually a perfect beginner phasmid now they do get bulky as you can see in this adult female she is a hulk but they don't all get quite this big. Sometimes they get a little bit smaller. Your pure bloodline ones are more likely to be larger as well. And you can see her coloration is typically brown. But if we have a look at the spines, I have something exciting to tell you if you ever keep this species. And that is linked to the coloration. Now, can you see the spines on this female here? Can you see how they're sort of greeny turquoisey I'm not sure how well it's picking up on the camera and it also follows in rims around the legs here this is something a lot of hobbyists that are new to phasmid keeping don't notice about their standard brown extatosoma tiaratum now the exciting thing about this color is the fact that these don't just stay brown you can change their environment for them to adapt and camouflage and go into different color morphs now the most sought after morph is the lichen morph. If you add lichen moss to your enclosure in large quantities, the likelihood is your stick insects will take on lichen morph of this of this particular species anyway. Now lichen morphs are very very pale. They're they're whitish, lightish green. It's a really really cool color. Um, it also links back to genetics. I know that mine have the genetics to do so because their parents were in fact lichen morph. You can also take on green morphs and even sometimes almost jet black. It is so, so cool. Now there is another story I wish to share for you and that is how they have evolved to survive as young. 
you see these guys flick over, they're over flickers. A flick of the tail, the over shoots up in the air and lands on the floor. Now, if you didn't know, over is the correct term for a stick insect egg. Now, these eggs actually have an edible part on them. Weird, right? They look like seeds. So it's a really good defensive capability. Now, there are ants living in Australia, where these guys are from, a specific species that often collect up these eggs, thinking they're seeds, taking them back home into their nests, eating the edible part of the seed, and then simply discarding the living part, the, the, the outer shell and the living embryo inside into their discard pile. These nymphs then hatch and actually mimic the ants not just in the way they walk, but even in coloration. They're almost blacky brown bodies with orangey red heads, just like that species of ant. They mimic the way they walk all the way out of the ant's burrow, up into the trees and start their life cycle. It is absolutely phenomenal. Now there is another defensive capability of these guys. They actually have a secretion and it's one that's never really bothered me. I've never even noticed it as such. It's supposedly to smell like toffee. Although, as I said, I've had these guys for years and years now and I may have smelt something similar years ago, perhaps, but I've handled these guys quite a few times and they've never really given me that secretion. I've never had that smell to my knowledge actually come from them and it seems to be completely harmless to us, but I would still recommend washing your hands after handling them, just in case. Another defensive capability of these guys is they can actually curl their tail to look like a scorpion. So it's, it's all look, guys. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're like bark and no bite. They, you, you can look at them and think, wow, this is a big, bulky animal. There's spines on it and it's curling its tail. What is that? Is there a stinger on there? And the predators don't want to mess with them, just in case because who wants to come face to face with a scorpion, right? Now these guys have huge sexual diamorphism, which means females look very different to males. So in a second, I am gonna bring you out a juvenile male, and I will also bring you out a mature male. Now it's really easy to sex these guys early on, and I'll be able to show you why by showing you this sub-adult male. So here is the sub-adult male. Now, ignoring the wings that he's growing there, they're just wing buds at the minute, he cannot use them. Oh, look, look, in that image there, you could see that he curled his tail. There's that scorpion appearance I was telling you guys about. You see how much they can curve it round. They can actually do this really close to their heads as well. Um, anyway, <laughs> to the point that I was saying, here is a juvenile female, and you can see how she is spiny along her back there. You see that? That's how we know that she's female. This male, although sub-adult, he is smooth all the way along the back of the tail and along the whole back of his body. Can you see that? The spines are only on the sides and the legs and a little bit on the back of his head. But most of him is smooth and they'll stay like that from young nymphs. From a very early age, the females will have spines and the males will not. And the males never get them on their backs all the way through to adulthood. Now, you're probably thinking there's not too much sexual dimorphism here except the fact he has elongated wing buds. So what I'll do now is I'll show you a mature male and you can see the huge difference then between a mature male and a mature female. So here he is, as you can see, they're easy to handle. Now look at him, he is completely different to her. He has really, really long antenna. He has a very slender body and his wings actually go slightly past his abdomen, if you can see there, or almost pretty much the same. So that whole long strip along the back is his wings. The bit underneath that you can see is his abdomen. Now you can see him crawling on her. Look at the difference in size. Look at the huge, huge difference in bulk, in mass, in girth. It is incredible. And here I am just pointing out to you the abdomen again away from the wings and he is still curving his abdomen like a scorpion whereas the wings have stayed straight. Now I do have to give a massive thanks to one of my financial supporters and one of my good friends, uh, Alex, who actually arranged for me to receive this mail in the 
post so massive thanks to you mate much appreciated now these are a parthenogenic species meaning you don't need a male for them to reproduce but by having a male they will have stronger bloodlines and also the ova will hatch months months quicker than just a female only culture I think female only eggs take nine months to a year or so whereas when you add a male you can have it as early as four months but it's more likely about six months for them to hatch so here's an image of his head and you can see he's got even a slender head compared to the female long antenna and there's her massive bulky head just there <laughs> look even the legs are thinner everything about these males are thinner and yes they can sort of fly but it's more like gliding it's kind of falling with style almost they they can fly they're just clumsy flyers and they kind of seldom do so as well now this male never flew in this clip so unfortunately i can't show you guys that but this was the same day i received him in the post so he's still in his kind of warming up period but I needed to take him out to show you guys for the difference between male and female. Now it's quite funny how he has just crawled on her back. Um, he would have probably attempted mating if I left them there longer, which is what we need. And the good thing about these is, once they mate once, the females tend to be fertile for life. Now fertile females will produce both male and female young, whereas non-fertile females will produce only female babies. So I've got another clip there for size comparison. Look at the abdomen for starters. Now her abdomen is large, it is full of eggs. So she's she is bigger than what they would be when they first turn to adult. But you can already see the huge size difference. Now he's curled his abdomen a few times there. He does want to mate with her. You can see it's almost feeling around there to find the end of her abdomen, except hers is also curled up. So he's kind of in the wrong place. Sorry, pal. I don't think you're getting lucky for this clip but they are well cool right well well cool now you can keep these guys at room temperature obviously they'll grow a lot quicker um, in a warmer room these are Australian so they are used to warmer climates however they've adapted pretty well in captivity to even people with those lower temperature rooms but they will be a bit lethargic and it's not healthy for them. So try and keep them, if you're keeping them at room temperature, keep them in the warmest spot in your room if possible. Now they do like light too, but don't put them in direct sunlight because we don't want them cooking, especially if they're in a glass tank, it'll be like a greenhouse effect and they will die. But they do like natural light. If you think of the Australian outback, for example, how much light there is through the day. So they are used to that kind of thing. Now I do just have to point out the eyes on these as well. It's like almost like a, a brownish marble. I think it's so, so cool. And I just, I just absolutely adore this species. Now these are well-documented species. They do very, very well in captivity. They are ultimate beginner stick insects. I wouldn't say they are the most beginner just because they do have that bulk. They do have those spines and although I would say they're fine for children. Some may get freaked out by the sheer size and by the little spikes. Um, in defense, they can also kick, but it really doesn't hurt at all. It's more kind of like, hey, what, what, what are you trying to achieve here? <laughs> you know, so there won't be any harm to your children, but I can see why some may not, you know, want to handle this species. And there's another little shot at the eye there. You can see both of the eyes of the female and the male. Really, really cool. You can also see her mouth parts twitching there while she's at the edge of the leaf. Now obviously camouflage for these guys is important, hence why they can take on those other colorations. And this standard brown is to look like dead leaves basically. Have you seen dead leaf mantis and so on? They all take this sort of shade of brown. Now if you're wondering why I didn't take on the lichen morph for this generation, it was just purely because when these guys hatched I didn't have all the, the moss ready and you need to put it in at very early stages for them to take that on and I just thought you know what my last lot was lichen I'm going to keep this lot brown and we're going to go for something different next time. I love these little feeding clips that I managed to get of the Extatso materiatum as well. There's not a lot of footage out on YouTube where you can see the mouth parts really working away at the leaf 
Now housing these guys you need at least a 45 centimeter tall enclosure but I would much recommend bigger. If you can go to 60 centimeters or more that will be even better. If you did want to stick to a 45 centimeter tall enclosure you wouldn't be able to house that many because it would cause overcrowding, stress and they will even bite each other's limbs if they are feeling overcrowded. So the bigger the better for enclosures for phasmids. <laughs> and there's our little dude there. So again, outro is me sat here in my dressing gown because I lost the audio. Um, I'm not gonna be able to voice over the other video that I lost because there's just no way of doing it for that one. There really isn't. I'm devastated as well because it was like a an update video. We were setting certain things free, things that were native to the UK and stuff. It was a nightmare. So I'm sorry you're never gonna get to see that video. Damn you microphone. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy this Phasmid Files video and I will see you next Sunday for a new video. Remember guys to hit that bell icon as well as the subscribe, give it a thumbs up and a comment because I really need your help to get this channel back up and running like the original one. So thanks again guys, take care, bye bye.